Hello, it's the beginning of May and I'm here to show you how to make a really simple hanging basket that should grow in and look beautiful all summer. I've been doing this for about 20 years. The first thing you need to think about is your container. So size really matters when it comes to um, hanging baskets, uh, simply because they retain the moisture, it gives more room for the plant roots to grow and it just makes it easier maintenance in the long run. So I call this the pizza method. And the first thing is the size of your pizza is really important. So this is your 12 inch pizza. It's ideal for your winter hanging baskets where you don't need to water so much, but really a bit small for the summer. This is your 16 inch pizza, your extra large. It's fantastic. If you can go this big, it's great. You put in a lot more plants, so it does cost more, and you put in a lot more compost, but then you really get something that really lasts really well. But most people, have this 14 inch basket and I think it works beautifully. It's absolutely beautiful for the summer. So now it's the next stage of the pizza process. It's the dough. And I just use a multi-purpose compost. You can use a tub and basket compost, but I've just always used multi-purpose and it's always worked really well for me. You're gonna fill about three quarters full and then you're gonna put the special secret ingredients in and this is what makes your basket last really well through the summer. So I've got some granules. You can get these anywhere, they're just normal slow release granules and I think they're fantastic because every time you water, the granules just slowly dissolve and disintegrate and release fertilizer slowly into the compost. And then this, is water retaining gel. So the water retaining gel will um, help your basket retain its moisture even if you might forget one day to water. It, it has absorbed the water and then releases it slowly so into the compost when it's needed. However, if you put it all at the top, if you're not careful, it bubbles up when it swells up and swells up and looks disgusting like slugs coming over the top. So that's why I do it at this point. I mix it all in. I think it's like making pastry, but I was rubbish at cooking, so don't take my word for it. So there you go. And then you top up again with multi-purpose. This is the fun bit, this is the plants. But you have to think of the plants like pizza toppings and you have to think how you're gonna space them in your basket. So what I usually start with is the central piece. There's loads of things as long as it's upright because you want to think that the, the basket has this kind of overall effect of a dome rather than having all trailing or all upright. So I would go for something like an osteospermum or a geranium or a fuchsia in the middle and there are different price options so you've got a really beautiful osteospermum here you've got a zonal geranium here or if you're making several you can buy a six pack and this works out a lot cheaper you can put each one of those geraniums in the center and um, it works out just as cheaply but ultimately when your basket's all grown in it looks just as beautiful as anything else for today, I'm going to use a zonal, just so you get the effect of what your geranium is going to look like. And there you are. Now I'm going to do the trailing plants. With a 14 inch basket, I believe you need four trailing plants. It's your choice, how many you use, how well you think it's going to fill your basket. Uh, I just find that four works really nicely in, in this shape. So I always like to put a trailing geranium simply because a trailing geranium is very tolerant. If I forget to water, the geranium does really well anyway. When I'm planting geranium, I'm positioning it so it's growing outward straight away. It just works better. The other thing I like to put in is a fuchsia. 
I love to use fuchsias and geraniums because they keep lasting and flowering till later on in the summer. So when everything else is looking not as good, the fuchsias and the geraniums are still looking at the best. Don't worry if the fuchsia is not flowering, it is after all early May. So it will take a while before the fuchsias do flower. In fact, sometimes people buy things that are flowering early now, and that's because they've been forced a little bit. Whereas if you really want longevity of your basket, you're better to have things that still to flower. It doesn't look brilliant now, but it will do. So the next stage is putting the ones that look pretty, that give a little bit of variation, that look dainty and delicate. And um, I like to use biddens, which is a lovely yellow flower. Another favourite of mine is Bacaba. You have Bacaba Snowflake, which is a white one, and then you have a beautiful mauve and a purpley colour and pink one. As you can see, I've placed them evenly around the basket, just as if you're placing pepperoni on a pizza. Now it's time for the cheese you're going to use upright plants in each space between the trailing. So you probably want to use two or three petunias and then you might want to add something else. Personally, I love verbena, one of my all time favorites, although I say that just about every plant. And I also do like to have a little bit of a kick of color and you wouldn't normally think of putting marigolds in hanging basket, but I often do. I, I like to think of it as for luck, but I just like it, there's something about the colours. And that's another thing I wanted to talk to you about is lots of people like to have a colour scheme. When it comes to hanging baskets, often it works better if you don't worry about the colours. It's just a riot of colour. It just looks so bright and cheerful. So don't get too fixated about how, which colour you want to use. Just go with it, just find lots of things you like, put them all together, and that is the beauty of summer bedding. So now I'm going to plant two petunias opposite one another. These ones are quite big. You don't need big plants, especially now in early May. Um, often the smaller ones are better because they grow in all together and merge really nicely. Now I'm going to use the verbena. You could use begonias, you could use busy lizzies, and like I say, you can use even use marigolds. Anything that you like, that you think looks pretty, that's upright, that fills that space. Lots of people ask me about lobelia. I love lobelia, it's absolutely beautiful. But beware, it is the first of the bedding plants to finish and go over. And it is also the most unforgiving if you forget to water. So I use it sparingly in baskets. If you really like it, I would maybe only use three lots of lobelia in one basket at most. And I just put it close to the edge so that it can trail over. But sometimes to give a haze effect, you can put it in the middle too. Don't judge your basket or yourself at this stage. It will take a couple of weeks to look pretty. If it was here at the nursery, I would be watering it and hanging it up. And in a couple of weeks, I would expect it to look really good. Early May, sometimes there are still frosts. If there are frosts, it will kill your plants. So make sure on those cold nights, you bring your basket in and then the most important job to do every single day is water, water and water. So you need to water either in early morning or in the evening and that way the moisture can really be absorbed when the, the weather isn't too hot. And make sure you really water the base of the plants. Don't water over the top. Watering over the top just spoils the flowers. Water right down inside here to make sure that the compost gets truly wet don't let it dry out. And the last thing is you might need to deadhead, especially things like the petunias. When there's a flower that's gone over, what you want to do is you want to nip 
the stem right down to the bottom so that the next flowers can keep coming and that way your basket should last all summer. I hope you enjoy doing your basket as much as I do.